today's tutorial. This is one a few people have been asking me to do, especially some of my students when we were doing veils recently, and that is how to walk with a veil. Ages and ages ago, I did a little video about uh, using veils, how to hold your veils, some basic moves with the veils. One of the most basic moves is walking. Often you use the veil when you're coming in for your entrance, so it's really nice if you can walk in elegantly and there's a few key tips on how to do this well. So if you're dancing with some veils or you want to learn how to dance with some veils, keep watching. First of all, if you don't know how to hold your veil, have a look at that. I'll check that out first. Check that out first um, because obviously you have to hold your veil before you're walking with it. Um, we start with our veil over our shoulders. We reach down as far as we can and then we come up into a nice V. Now, a couple of things to think about with your V. Firstly, you have to be quite flexible in your shoulders. If your arms are forward, you're not going to be able to get any air into your veil. You need them back. So try and keep them back as far as you can. Second thing is try and keep them up with your elbows straight. I know it's really tempting to go like this, but look, already you can see it breaks the line, it doesn't look as nice, and it can be tempting to go like this too. This can be really nice, but when you first start off, it's good to keep your arms high because you're going to get even more air into it, whereas when you're here, you have to work those shoulders a little bit harder to keep back. You'll see what I mean when we start walking. Okay, hopefully I've got enough space to show you this one. Starting off with the veil, just watch the air in the veil as I move. I'm not walking that fast, but you can see the veil is coming up and it's coming off my hair and it's getting air into it. The things that are doing this are firstly, as I said, keeping my arms back. So watch the difference if I keep my arms too far forward compared to opening up nice and long. The other thing that I often see people doing, which they don't realise is, and I've kept my hair out for this one because of this, is they'll set up and they'll have their hair nice and light like this and they'll be ready with their veil and then they come up, but because their hair is over the veil, it can't move. Can you see that? Can't move, my hair's in the way. So, little tip, just make sure you always have your veil away from your hair and get lots of nice energy into it. So this is a really light silk veil. It's a lot easier to come up. When you're first starting, I know you might be tentative about using really good quality veils because they are expensive and you might be scared of them. I know it's only fabric, but still sometimes people get scared. So if you're using a heavier veil, which I happen to have here, this is a crepe one, the same principles apply, but even more so. So that silk one, you could see, it's quite easy for me to get air into it. Oh, this is a half circle one, so I have to make sure I'm grabbing the straight edge. So this is heavy. It's got the edging, which is heavier. You can get some really beautiful ones that bead it. They're even heavier. So same thing, opening up through the chest, nice big stretch. You can always do some stretches like this to get you started. And then coming into it, you also might need to walk a little quicker so not like rushing through like you're going to the supermarket and you only have a 15 minutes parking spot. Nice and elegant still, but it might be bigger steps, longer steps to keep that air. Okay, so next I'm going to go into some things that you shouldn't do when you are trying to walk with your veil. Firstly, if it's a windy day and you are dancing outside, forget about it. It is definitely going to end up on your head. If you're wearing sticky lip gloss, as you have heard in my costume disaster video, it's gonna end up stuck to your head as well as to your face if you've got hair clips. Oh, it's a disaster. So never dance with a veil when it's outside and it's windy. But if you're inside, remember, don't dance if there's fans under the, uh, above you and you're underneath the fan because you won't be able to control the veil. Again, it's gonna go over your head. But even more than that, your veil could get caught in the fan and you can damage the veil. So obviously you don't wanna do that. Okay, next common mistake I see, hopefully that first one isn't too common, um, is that people don't grab far enough down the veil. So when you are setting up, as I said at the start, you wanna have your arms nice and long before you grab onto it. I often see people grabbing up here because they think, oh, it's easier if it's shorter because then I have more control. But you watch, once it's up here, how am I gonna get air in that veil when I'm holding it straight? You need length in it so that there's more fabric to move back. So rather than here, see, I can't even straighten my arms with this one. And of course, I'm not gonna get 
I'm not going to get energy in the vagal part just here because it's under tension. Instead, we want that part of the veil nice and soft, nice and flowy, to then be able to move. So, especially if you have lots of space and you have a veil at home, even if you don't have a veil, if you have a long piece of fabric, you can even practice with the scarf, that will help you as well. Enjoy this one, it's really beautiful to dance with these props. I have to say that the veil is probably my favourite prop because it's so elegant and it really adds to any performance. And the first thing I nearly always do in a veil performance is walk into the room or into the space. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up Subscribe if you haven't already. Always heaps of tutorials coming out to help you with your belly dancing and discussions as well. And if you have any requests, suggestions, feedback, write down below. And as always, happy dancing.